Hello once again, this is Skip, Victor Echo 6, Bravo, Golf Tangle. This is a short uh, video presentation here on uh, how I built up this 200 watt, 9 centimeter amplifier feed assembly for my moon bounce dish. Besides all my overcomplicated PIC control circuitry, there was uh, two preamp modules that were built also. It only takes milliwatts to drive this thing to uh, a full 150 watts output. So they had to be built, and that's what's in those little boxes on the side of the assembly at the back. Again, I can't take credit for the actual amplifier circuitry design that was done by hands, uh, Sugar Mike 6, Papa Golf Papa. Just like in my other video, when I was building a 6 centimeter amplifier, the uh, custom circuit board designed by hands is, is built and then mounted on top of a copper heat spreader and then that on top of a aluminum heat plate for uh, heat sinking. The first driver module uses a small pill package LDMOS device which is soldered directly to the uh, copper heat spreader like I did before. The copper heat spreader cooled off, the circuit boards were replaced and then it was all bolted down to the aluminum heat sink. All the components were soldered on and the uh, side walls for adjoining connectors. The second driver module was fashioned in the same way as the first, using the copper heat spreader and soldering the active device down to it. The boards put in place and all the components added. Next was the uh, snow flaking procedure. For getting maximum output in these two modules, they were hooked together and uh, driven and monitored onto a uh, HP power meter. Snow flaking or tuning the input to the modules is relatively easy with a sweep generator and a spectrum analyzer but the uh, outputs on the uh, modules has to be done under power, so it's a little trickier. Next is the power amplifier, the real interesting part, another hands design. This power amplifier is made out of two separate boards, uh, much larger than the driver modules, of course, and of the uh, same type of board material. In this picture, you'll see how they made up to each other and uh, will bolt to the uh, copper heat spreader. Again, the uh, big LDMOS devices had to be soldered to the heat, copper heat spreader with the uh, custom uh, press I had built. Here in this picture you can see the two devices soldered to the plate. The capped on tape is still surrounding the uh, devices to keep the solder from spreading. Next, the two circuit boards were put in place and uh, holes were drilled for the bolts and um, all the parts and pieces were soldered on and it uh, was pretty well done. I kind of got ahead of myself here a little bit, but uh, before all this, the custom made heat sink was uh, built, a large block of aluminum that was milled with uh, fins in it for cooling later on. The copper heat spreader was uh, shaped to fit on here exactly. And then on the bottom, uh, a fan was installed with uh, four mounting legs. A set of walls was built out of 8 inch aluminum to make uh, sidings for the enclosure, we'll call it. Somewhere to put the jacks and uh, different wiring connections to it. What's the old saying? The truth is in a pudding. So it's time to uh, hook things up and put some power to it and see what happens. So this is a picture of the test jig or test procedure on the workbench. The output of the uh, power amplifier itself is fed through a large 20 dB attenuator which is fed directly into the HP power meter to give me a direct reading in watts. In this picture you can see the two driver modules connected to a transverter and this is how I uh, developed the uh, 3.4 gig signal to uh, run this contraption. The signal source is this IFR 1200 which develops the 144 MHz IF that drives that transverter. Just to play it safe and uh, keep the eyeballs from being cooked, I uh, made up this uh, <laughs> set of safety goggles. I don't know if it worked or not, but it made me feel better. Unfortunately, I don't have any videos of the actual test, but uh, I did run the amplifier up to 100 watts and a little bit over. Uh, I was kind of restricted by the power supply. The 32 volt power supply I had wasn't uh, heavy enough in current to supply enough juice for the amplifier, but it, uh, I was able to prove that everything works. 
So if the amplifier tested and proven, it was time to go back out in the shop and uh, do some metal work and burn my fingers. I like the VE4MA uh, type of feed design, so I found a piece of copper pipe and proceeded in drilling holes for the uh, adjusting bolts for the circular polarization. Using a rotary table and then the uh, tap inside of the chuck of the mill itself uh, definitely makes the holes uh, square with the world and the threading for the bolts true. I did learn some tricks when I built the uh, six centimeter IMU feet earlier. The outer pipe and cone of the launcher itself has to be perfectly concentric or true to the waveguide pipe itself or uh, your pattern will be way out of whack so I, I learned to build these uh, two rings up to hold everything in place while it was being soldered. So with the hose clamp holding a copper sheet nicely snug around the two aluminum rings I uh, proceeded in soldering it up. Then with a sandpaper flapper wheel and a die grinder I just merely uh, cleaned up the solder so it looked good and uh, Got the excess solder taken off on the inside also. So all the parts and pieces made for the feed uh, is on to the next step, uh, the tuning of it all. And yes, that was a lot of fun. I'm not going to go into too much detail on the tuning of this feed because I've covered it in other videos and in fact there's even a dedicated video on the tuning procedure of a VE4MA feed like this one. The circular polarization adjustment is done the same way also and uh, it tuned not too bad. I had a bit of grief with some of it, but all in all, it, turned, it worked out quite well. Okay, we're almost done. Uh, we're getting to the home stretch of having this thing finally built. I needed some kind of circuit to control the 32 volt high current power going to the uh, main amplifier and the two driver modules. So this is what I came up with. There's three FET switches for the power. Uh, two little circuit boards that will be measuring the main power amplifier current going to each of those active devices. And then uh, a set of fuses for uh, protecting various circuits. This is a little uh, circuit module as it's uh, getting wired into the rest of the circuitry, uh, into the fuses and uh, how it all leads up to a DB25 connector, which will plug into the back of the enclosure that the pick circuit sits in. The pick circuit is just like all the other feeds I've built. It monitors uh, the amplifier current draw, it controls the fan, it monitors the temperature, the voltages, and uh, sends a lot of the data back into the ham shack so I can see it all on a visual basic screen. The feed waveguide itself is uh, mounted on a special bracket and bolted to the aluminum plate. Uh, you can see here where the isolation relay is in the receive preamp. And it's connected to the power amplifier with a fairly large piece of uh, flexible semi-rigid hardline. The two driver modules were mounted on a bracket that's uh, built on top of the fuse holder assembly and uh, joined together. Then a small piece of semi-rigid goes over to the amplifier. Just behind the uh, power amplifier itself is where the enclosure for the pick circuitry sits and um, all the connections to the outside world eventually get uh, all put into this box at the back side for connections. Then finally the crash frame is put together and bolted onto the plate to uh, protect all the goodies and have something to carry it by. And once again just a little bit more testing. The assembly was stripped down again a little bit, the uh, waveguide section taken off and the amplifier part hooked up into the uh, attenuator and to the power meters again. The thing I was doing now was getting the uh, all the sensors calibrated into the visual basic program so that it was reading the power output uh, almost correctly and uh, various things like uh, amplifier current, temperatures, etc, etc. I do like building these visual basic screens to monitor the amplifiers. I, uh, I tend to get a bit extreme on it though but yeah, it's all kind of fun. These are some screenshots from the early version of it. I've changed it quite a bit since uh, since these, but it uh, gives you an idea of what's going on. It's um, pretty straightforward stuff. It's, it's neat to see it all work. It's a never-ending development because I uh, keep coming up with new ideas every day, it seems like. Okay, I know what you're going to say. Not more testing. So this is where I drag it all outside, hook it to the actual feed, waveguide horn itself, and... Uh, 
spray some RF out. I wouldn't dare do this inside the house. It's essentially the same setup as inside when I was testing on the bench. Uh, still using the IFR and the transverter for the 3.4 gig drive source. And I have a small laptop running the uh, diagnostic screen. It's uh, straightforward enough to do the testing outside. I used a big RF dummy load to uh, check the hybrid coupler into the two power watt meters. Then I hooked the same uh, hybrid coupler over to the feed waveguide from the amplifier and checked to see what the return loss is with the uh, power output. The tuning must be pretty good because the uh, return loss uh, seemed okay. Finally, got the feed up to the dish and what did I say? More testing? So this was back in the spring of uh, 2020 where I got the feed connected to the dish for the first time and the main goal here was to peek on the solar noise to find a main focal point of the opening of the feed horn itself. These next group of pictures you can see how it all mounted up and connected to the uh, dish um, interconnection box. It uh, also shows the motorized uh, feed drive I use for uh, moving the feed back and forth to find a focal point. It all worked very well. Using the closed circuit television camera, I could zoom in on the feed and watch it move in and out to find a focal point. So you're probably asking, what, there's not going to be any moon echo testing like I usually do? All these pictures were taken back in 2020, and I wasn't doing any uh, YouTube video recording back then. Just recently, though, with the Dubis uh, contest on the weekend, I did make some more videos of the actual moon transmitting so uh stay tuned so once again thanks for watching and uh 73 from skip victor echo 6 bravo golf tangle